This small lens, this little little lens, help me fall in love with the 40 mm field of view. And I want to share with you why I do recommend this lens and why you should get it and why you should look at the 40 mm field of view if you didn't use yet a 40 mm equivalent field of view lens. Let's talk about this now. So this is a very very small lens, a great lens that I will review it. But before let me share with you a little my story, my experience, why I've decided to pick this lens. So first of all, when I decided to study street photography and I was feeling passionate about street photography, I've read about Henri Cartier-Bresson and I was looking at all his pictures and all his philosophy regarding the 50mm lens, the 50mm field of view on a full frame. He used Leica M3, a small camera and his philosophy was always use a small camera to make street photography and I totally agree with this. Also, he praised the 50mm field of view, but when he got to India, he used a 35mm field of view because he decided that there was too crowdy and he needed a little wider lens. So anyway, great compositions in the 35mm field of view and in the 50mm field of view. But I'm not Bresson and uh, who is Bresson nowadays? So I've tried the 50mm field of view and I was liking it. I was getting good results, Bresson-like, but always I felt constrained that I was a little too close from the scene, from how I wanted to compose it. I don't know. For me, the 50mm field of view, it felt too tele. I felt that I was too much in the subject, in the scene, and I didn't have enough space to back up and to compose. So next I've tried the 35mm field of view with Fujifilm X100F and I've loved it, but again, the pictures weren't looking like Bresson because I felt that I was too behind and I wasn't able to make good compositions, tight compositions with the borders closed with the 35mm field of view. And if you are looking at great 35mm field of view shooters, you'll observe that also they don't have compositions like this. So in general, depending on the scene, on the country and how much people are at a specific scene, you will need to use different lenses probably a 35 millimeters if it's a crowded day, if you want to do again Bresson like pictures or probably a 50 millimeters if it's an airy day. So you have lots of spaces and there aren't many people in the scene. But after having all these dissatisfactions, I've decided let me try this little pancake lens because I saw the offer of this lens and it was a pancake lens and this attracted me and I said, okay, let me try it. Probably I will like it or no, let me try it. So I've took this lens and from the moment when I mounted this lens on my Lumix GX9 camera, I felt in love. So look how compact is now Lumix GX9 with this small pancake lens. And I felt in love not just about the compactness of the camera and the ergonomics on how this camera is acting on the streets. And again, when I'm putting my hand on this combo, wow, wow, what a great combo. But I felt in love with the pictures, what I was seeing, what I was thinking, and I'm showing pictures and I've showed pictures till now from this combo and from this lens, I was able to get. So my imagined picture, the subject, the scene was looking how I was seeing in the end result, in the end composition. So this is why I felt in love with this lens. But more than that, it has an f1.7 aperture. So a small pancake lens with f1.7 aperture helped me have some subject to background separation. So it offered me the chance to make the compositions, how I was seeing them, but also helped me do some portraits and to have that subject to background separation when I wanted it. So this is why I've started to love this lens. And this lens, it is Lumix 20mm f1.7 made in Japan. 
Mark II on my Lumix GX9. So, a great, great combo. And I've searched for that combo for many years to replace it in an APS-C or in a full frame format. But I wasn't able to find that format. Again, that will offer me and will tick all the boxes that this camera is offering me. But I found it. And uh, if I publish the video, the link is here in the card. But if I will not publish, subscribe to see that video. So, why this lens and why you can use this lens on any Lumix camera or probably Olympus, but especially on Lumix cameras, I feel that on Lumix cameras, the AF of this lens was giving me the best results. So first of all, this lens, it is very, very small, a true pancake lens, very, very, very small. Look how small it is. So as seen as my finger, great. Being so small will make from Lumix GX9 a portable camera just like X100V, just like X100F, but with a tilt screen, with a tilt screen, no flip screens, again, with an EVF, with a tilting EVF, so great for sunny days. So, a great lens that will make any Micro Four Thirds camera that you have a very portable camera. But what about image quality? We will get immediately to the image quality, but I must address the build quality a little. So regarding build quality, this is metal build, no plastic, metal, metal. The focusing ring is great after years of using it. And it's made in Japan, made in Japan. So great build quality. Regarding image quality, the image quality, it is great. At f1.7, this lens, it is very, very sharp. At end, at f5.6, it is as sharp in side-by-side -side test as the 20mm f1.4 from Olympus. But again, it's a side-by-side -side test. And this is why I don't believe in side-by-side -side test. And I will not show you the picture side-by-side, -side. you just have to believe me. But side-by-side, -side, when I took a picture over my window to the buildings, the sharpness was the same at f5.6. But in reality, this will give me better micro contrast. So this is why, again, I don't like in-lab test and side-by-side -side test, but I like real-world photography because the real-world photography will tell you more about that lens, not side-by-side -side test. The side-by-side -side test doesn't prove anything if you are asking me. So, regarding image quality, you have great image quality. At f1.7 is very sharp and it will render great results in the majority of time. But yes, there are some scenes when depending on the light, you'll not have that great image quality as you have with a pro lens. But these are 10% of the cases or 5%. It doesn't matter too much. You will be able to get it because you'll be able to work it out in post-processing. And by the way, I have a special newsletter dedicated to the passionate photographers. So if you want to learn more about photography tips, tricks, and all kinds of useful information for free, please subscribe to my newsletter. Link in the comments and description. Another big advantage that I've discussed about this lens is that you have an f1.7 lens. And why I must address and to get to this specific point is not just about subject to background separation on a micro four thirds lens, but you get that subject to background separation, you get it. But also it's about the fact that you can take this lens and shoot it in low light photography. You can shoot it indoors and outdoors in night photography. This lens will make from your Micro Four Thirds camera a go-to camera in any conditions. Yes, I would like to have the new G92 sensor on a GX10, but we don't know if this will happen. And now we are getting to the next point, the AF. The AF of this lens, it is acceptably good, is not so fast to the present standard days. But when I've used this lens, I didn't felt that I was missing shots, but I had patience. So it's as fast as an X100F, probably a little uh, behind, but not as another Micro Four Thirds lens that you know that they are lenses are very very fast now it's a little behind you must have patience but you will not miss focuses if you know how to use this lens but again i would want a third iteration so a third iteration of this lens with a lumic gx10 probably will be a great street photography kit but till now this is what we have great on the hand look how great it is and this is a huge deal for street photography you want a camera that will not have weight that will 
block the way that you are composing and taking different angles and different shots. And this camera with this lens and any Micro Four Thirds small camera with this lens that is more will help you do this. So in conclusion, should you get this lens? Should you get the Olympus 70mm f1.8? Or should you get the Lumix 50mm f1.7? All that lenses are great lenses. But again, you really must understand the 40mm field of view. So yes, you can trick yourself if you aren't picky that a 35mm equivalent lens it will do the same photography as a 40 millimeters field of view equivalent lens you can trick yourself but no but no it's not the case when you really want to use a prime you really must want and you really must need that focal lens so this is the only 40 millimeters equivalent lens pancake lens in the micro four thirds realm that will make your camera a 40 millimeters camera portable this is not portable yes overall you get here some advantages low light advantages and image quality advantages but this you get the portability factor so from my point of view this is a must go to lens and if you'll fall in love with the 40 millimeters field of view and you want to shoot just 40 millimeter lenses then you can go for this lens from time to time personally i've tried to make this package a go-to package a portable package for an everyday carry but it's not like this this is like x100f with a 40 millimeters field of view so I'm totally recommending this uh, package. My go-to package in 2019 was GX9 with 20 mm f1.7 and X100F. So when I want it a little wider, I've picked my X100F. But when I wanted the 40 mm field of view, I picked this camera. And personally, I always gravitated towards this field of view. And I've made a video why the 40 mm field of view, but probably I will make another video why the 40 millimeters field of view it is so so great for me and let's see if you will take with that video so subscribe to my channel to see that video when it will be published until then check my first video about why the 40 millimeters field of view click 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 here right now